Okay, so let's dive into one of the biggest little paintings I've done in a while, titled Hidden in the Tide. It's done in watercolor on watercolor paper, mounted on a wooden cradle. I'll list all of the tools and supplies used in the video down below, and as always, let me know if you have any questions. I used a number six round brush for the majority of this painting. Probably about 90% of it is with the number six, while sometimes I'll switch to a number four, which is a little bit smaller, and I use that for detail work. And at the very end, I'll grab a number zero for really, really small details. I'm not gonna go too much into which colors I used and specific techniques since this is a speed video, but I wanted to make a point that I made sure to mix multiple colors into each area. For example, the rocks are not just solid gray, but they're mixed with browns and greens for variation. This makes them look more realistic because we know that even though we can't see individual plants from afar, they are there and do add color to the rocks. I did the same thing with the trees and the water and I usually don't even mix or fully mix the paint on the palette so that when I go to lay down the color I get a more blotchy effect uh, where you can see one color was picked up more and then it blends in with the other one that was on the brush. And I like doing this for painting nature and environments because it feels more realistic and natural. I used several reference photos that I took when I visited Oregon, uh, the Oregon coast, especially for the shoreline where the rocks and the trees are. I did a Google search for underwater rocks just in general to help figure out some of the rocky ground uh, near the mermaid's tail, but this time I didn't use any reference for the mermaid, like uh, fish or anything like that, which normally I would, um, mostly because I'd want to get some inspiration for colors and design. but. During May, I painted a few mermaids uh, for an art challenge called Mermaid. I didn't get very far into the challenge because at the time we were looking to purchase our first home and we ended up finding one so things got really hectic and I just couldn't keep up unfortunately. But one of the mermaids I did paint, I really liked the color scheme of and it happens to be one that I uploaded to YouTube so I'll go ahead and put a link uh, to that here if you'd like to take a look at that. I apologize for parts of the video where it gets kind of dark. I'm still working on pulling together a decent lighting setup and I got lucky for some of the painting um, because I am working underneath a window so when it was sunny outside everything looks really good but when it wasn't sunny everything got dark and it would often fluctuate so I couldn't just set the camera and forget it and if I use the auto settings on the camera then everything starts to look like I don't know it's it doesn't look as nice as if I do it myself so unfortunately like I would set it and then the lighting would change and I'd be so absorbed in the painting that I didn't notice and I'm really sorry you guys but I'll work on it I'm hoping that kind of Patreon will, will sort of help me get a better lighting um, set up and among other things. Um, I just started it so I guess I can mention it to you guys here. And this painting is the first in-depth painting on Patreon. You can see work in progress pieces of this as I worked on it. All the details are visible and everything uh, so if you're into that um, plus secret access to a shop and other special perks. Uh, consider joining my Patreon page to uh, see all that goodness. No pressure, I'm just kind of setting it up so it's there if you like it. If you don't, it's okay too. Totally up to you guys. But I'll throw the link at the end of the video and down below if you do feel like checking it out. I'd appreciate it, so yeah. Back to the mermaid and painting this. One of the main colors I incorporated um, was opera pink. It's this very bright, intense pink color that I did not know I was missing so badly until I got it and I experienced it. Because there's no way at all I could have achieved those bright pinks if I just kept using alizarin and crimson and cadmium red. So if you don't have opera pink, totally recommend it. It's really fun. Final touches to the piece include using thick, heavy body white acrylic paint, um, especially on the waterline and the wave and a little bit of metallic fine tech watercolor silver was used on the wave over top of the white paint and a little bit of gold on the mermaid herself to give her some little shine and that about wraps it up 
thanks for watching you guys throw comments down below of course if you have any questions at all about the process and i will be putting more process videos and real-time videos in-depth stuff on patreon as well so that's a good place to go check out that and yeah thanks for watching i will see you next time bye